Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will talk about Mythic Jaina Proudmoore. Now this fight is fairly long, and I could go on for probably about half an hour just about unholy DK specific things and nuances, but since we don't have that kind of time, I will give you the broad strokes of how to parse as well as give you some progress tips. As far as my talent build goes, I am using a default unholy build with Epidemic. Now for progress, Pestilence will be better, because you do get more phase 3 damage out of it. But if you're just looking for overall numbers, then Epidemic will be slightly better in my opinion. Then for the utility talent, I do run Spell Eater, just because basically everything is spell damage on this fight, so it comes in pretty handy. Roll the footage here. For Azerite traits, I am running Triple Fester Might, 1 Magus, and double um, Treacherous Covenant. Okay, so first of all, cooldown usage here. As you can see, I did use my Army of the Dead on pull. This will depend on your kill timing. If your overall kill is shorter than about 8 minutes and 15 seconds, then you will not be using um, Army in the first phase. You will want to save it until the last phase, because obviously that is where you would need that boss damage. So in this raid, we do have one buyer, which kind of slows down our overall kill time, allowing me to use Army here. However, if I was to do this with a full guild group, our kill time would be too quick, which would mean that I would miss out on one whole army, which is about 800 to 900k overall damage. And that is a significant chunk of damage lost, so just keep that in mind whenever you're trying to parse on this fight. The rest of the cooldowns, I just pop every single thing on pull, and about 5 seconds into the pull, the first ballista will get frozen. And you definitely want to toss a dot on that one as well. So as you can see, go in, drop all my dots, dot up the ballista. And what I do here is actually start using Epidemic. As soon as I dotted up that ballista, I start using my Epidemics. This is because we're only running one Priest in this raid. So that means that we only get one Mind Control. So since one of the adds is Mind Controlled and it gets jumped off, the other one is still alive, so we get to cleave it. So here I'm essentially hitting 3 targets with my Epidemic, and that is a nice little DPS gain. In the first phase, mechanically, um, there's a lot of things that you can do as a DK uh, with AMS. However, I suggest using your AMS for the Ring of Ice, that I will explain a little later on exactly how that works. Now in this clip or in this video, I don't get Avalanche at all. The way I deal with Avalanche typically is wait until the first stick is about to happen, move out of melee, kite it along the back, and then dip into the ranged pile to prevent myself from freezing. Um, depending on which avalanche you get, you should lock it back. So for example, avalanches that happen after blizzards, you should use the lock gate to get back into melee. But for the rest of them, I tend to just use my death's advance and kite it along the edge. And try not to use AMS for it, because you do want to save that for Ring of Ice. Now you saw that I dotted up the Ballista there, um, and that's just to get a little bit of extra damage. On progress, you don't need to do it, um, it's, not, it's not necessary, but if you're trying to go for overall numbers, that is definitely a DPS gain. Um, one thing to mention, even on progress, you can dot up the first Ballista, and it's actually helpful to your raid to do so because the first Ballista needs to die fairly quickly. Okay, so right here we get the first Ring of Ice, and as you can see, I use my AMS as soon as I see the rest of the melee start moving out. The reasoning here is that while my AMS is active and I have that buff on me, the countdown for me to get frozen will not start. So that means that until this Ring of Ice actually goes off, which as you can see the cast uh, just started here, um, that countdown will not start. So as soon as Ring of Ice goes off, it uses up my AMS, and that is where the 8 seconds start ticking. And in those 8 seconds, the melee DPS who ran out, because they don't have a way to deal with this Ring of Ice, make their way back into melee, allowing me to have full uptime on the boss. So this is very important. If you happen to delay your AMS a little bit, and people actually start running out, and you see that the frozen circle appears around you, and then you AMS, you can still stay in melee to kind of hit the boss, but you will have to dip in fire at the last second, or run back out towards the ranged camp to avoid getting frozen. 
Um, I am not using pestilence in this video, obviously, but if you're doing this on progress, you will be using pestilence. So I suppose I should mention a little bit how you should go about using it. So pestilence on this fight is a little bit tricky in the first phase because the boss moves quite erratically. One thing that you want to keep an eye on is boss timers. If the boss is about to do an avalanche, it's a very good time to drop your death and decay on her because she will not be moving since she will be channeling. However, if the, your tanks are about to move the boss from one side of the ship to the other to deal with the frozen ballistas, you don't want to use your AMS or your uh, death and decay. Um, another situation where you want to avoid using your death and decay is when you have a fresh set of bombards coming in. And that is because obviously you can't predict where they will fall, so it is very likely that the boss will have to move right after the bombards, so just save your death and decay until right after that. So here we get the second ring of ice, and as you can see, um, all the melee start to run out, and I haven't used my AMS yet. So here is an example of what you should not be doing. Ring of ice is about halfway through the cast. Um, the melee are running out, and I have not used my AMS quite yet. All the melee are out. The, the countdown for me to get frozen starts, and then I use my AMS right there. So as you can see, the countdown will keep ticking. And as soon as this Ring of Ice cast goes off, my AMS will be used up, which means that if the countdown goes to zero, I will get frozen. So what I do here is actually dip into fire as I am moving towards the ranged camp. So I notice that I messed up a little bit. I dip into fire and all the melee DPS kind of moving towards me. So I lost a little bit of uptime, but you can see that pre AMSing before the countdown starts is much more safe and much more beneficial. Um, here, I believe one of our tanks got frozen. Um, so I just dropped my DND, try to cleave them out the best I can. Uh, the boss phases at 60.5%. And there's a few things you can do. You can either dip out of melee range so you don't get that extra stack, or you can stand in the fire like I do right here. Um, and you can keep perfect uptime on the boss without getting that last stack. Another thing that I also like to do is build up my runic power. Uh, you saw that I was not dumping my runic power there before we were phasing. This is because I want runic power going into this transition phase since um, there are some certain splits where it is beneficial to just have a ton of runic power so you can just do death coils as you run by these ads. And it's just so happened that this was one of those splits. So the possible image spawns, um, I'm just going to call them all one side, where you get all five on one side, so your whole raid goes to one side. You can get a 4-1 or a 3-2. So on a 3-2 split or on a 4-1 split, I always go on the side with the fewer adds. On a 4-1 split, I just DPS the add down normally. On a 3-2 split or on an all one side split, I will keep my Fester Might in mind. This is because you can actually go into the second phase with six Fester Might stacks, if you do it correctly. Fester Might stacks will trigger whenever the wounds get bursted. So this means that if you just build up six wounds on an image and don't pop them, whenever the image dies, you will instantly get six Fester Might stacks. And that is definitely what you should do on the image that is right before the boss. So on this uh, all one side split, you can see that on the first two adds, I didn't build any wounds. I just used my death coils and I just dotted them up. There's no fester my counter at all. Now this is the fourth ad. Again, nothing. Now as I run up to this last ad, I will actually go ahead and build up six wounds on it or however, however many I get out of two festering strikes. And that is the amount of fester my stacks I will go into the last phase with. So there it dies, and I only got four. So that's um, you know bad RNG. Sometimes you'll get four, other times you will get six. And your AMS will be back up here. One thing that I like doing on progress is this last set of adds. Right after the ad dies, the boss starts moving towards the raid. You can AMS and just play defense for your raid. You can soak all the little circles to make sure that no one gets frozen. Now here we actually had one person get frozen early. Uh, but typically, whenever the boss gets kicked and starts moving towards the raid, I AMS and then I just soak for the raid. Here, actually, our, our hunters and our rogues did a very good job of intercepting most of those orbs. So I end up not having to do that. Um, 
in this phase, you will see that I use my Unholy Frenzy, my Apocalypse, and my Trinket. In phase one, I use those twice. So I use them on pull, and then when they came up. However, the way your push timings work, your Unholy Frenzy will come up almost as you push the boss into the intermission phase. You don't want to use your cooldowns there. You want to wait until you get to this point to use your third set of cooldowns. So here I'm just dropping Death MDK, dotting up the Unexploded Ordinance, and just hitting the boss as hard as I can. So here, not much going on for melee DPS. I just follow the boss, tunnel it. If you need damage on the barrel, you can obviously go ahead and do that and swap to it. On progress, um, our range DPS and some of our better multi-daughters definitely had a much easier time and they didn't really need help. So I typically just hit the boss. One thing that I do here is as we run past this second barrel, I refresh my dot on the boss. And that is because it essentially gives me a free virulent plague on the barrel as the dot spreads to it when the boss runs by. So the barrel is not broken quite yet, but I am getting that dot on the barrel early just to make sure it's ticking as soon as it's broken. Um, in the second phase, there's a few things that will happen with your cooldowns. So your next set of cooldowns, there's a few things you can do. On progress, since we were pushing a little bit slower, I often used my second apocalypse in this phase or fourth apocalypse overall um, in this phase. In more recent kills and in this kill you will probably see, I do not use my fourth apocalypse here. I wait until we get to the ice wall just to make sure that I have it the exact moment the ice wall is up. And that just makes it line up a little bit nicer for the last phase. Again, this kind of relies on you having a slightly longer kill time because the shorter your kill time is, obviously the less cooldowns you get in and the less forgiving it is to just sit on your cooldowns for a little bit. So you see that here I pop my Unholy Frenzy. I just hit the boss. However, I do not pop my Apocalypse and I do not pop my Trinket. Run out with the broadside, drop it, and then just try to keep uptime on the boss. So here the boss actually crosses the ice I can't chase, so we lose a little bit of uptime. However, this is, I think, an important point to make. Your damage in the second phase will not really matter because the DPS check in this phase is so forgiving, you will more, more likely than not have to stop your damage. So not using a cooldown in this phase is not actually that punishing. It punishes your overall damage a little bit. However, I believe that if everyone does that, um, so if everyone holds a cooldown that they could use um, in this phase, but they choose not to, that will actually push your overall timings a lot nicer because everyone just gets to DPS until you push the boss instead of having to stop and stand around for 10, 15 seconds like we did on progress. So here, just dot up the barrel and you know hit the boss bait the beam not much happening here um we're basically just looking to set up where we're going to stand when we're doing this ice wall so the raid sets up and from here i'm basically just looking at building resources and getting ready to just nuke down that ice wall as an unholy dk um, unfortunately you will be one of the lower damage classes for the ice wall but overall uh, if you use your cooldown correctly, you can contribute. So the boss is about to push here. I refresh my dot. I try to use all of my wounds up before the boss teleports away because this is one of those situations where if you don't use it, you lose it. I actually think um, the boss ends up just having one wound when she teleports. Oh, I actually got all of them. Now I hit the wall, dot it up, use my cooldowns. And as you can see, since I didn't use that apocalypse, Again, in the second phase, it is now up for the wall, which means that in a minute and a half, it will be back up again for that last phase burn where I pop it together with army. So here, just DPS down the wall. Now here is where you will start using Epidemic if you're using this talent. Again, please only use this if you're trying to parse. It is not better if you're intending to just kill the boss. So here we have two stack targets. So that means that Epidemic will be better than using Death Coils. You will only use Death Coils on Sudden Doom procs. So I start DPSing um, the Ice Block here, use my Epidemics, 
and I do not drop my death and decay here and you should not drop it as well. So you want to save your death and decay for when you go back to the boss because there's a pretty extended time where you can be cleaving both the elemental and Jaina and that obviously adds up to more Jaina damage. So as soon as the ice block dies, I start building runes on the elemental. And this is because I'm not using my runes on anything else anyway, so I might as well build up some wounds. So when I do drop this death and decay, I actually get double wounds, obviously wounds on Jaina, and wounds from the elemental that will just go ahead and cleave each other. And in this phase, again, I am only using epidemics and using death coils with those sudden doom procs. This phase is fairly straightforward, but one thing that you do not want to do is pull the trigger on your cooldowns too early. It can be very, very tempting to use your Unholy Frenzy, your Apocalypse, your Trinket, your second potion, when your army is not quite ready yet. And in this kill, I believe uh, it worked out so my army was exactly up for the entire duration, but it was very, very close. So typically, the way it worked out for me in the past is we would bait the Ice Beam, and right after the Ice Beam, uh, when you dodge out of the way, that's when my army would be up, so that's where I would pop all of my cooldowns together. So here, just hitting the boss, not much happening. My Unholy Frenzy is coming up in 3 seconds. My um, Army of the Dead is only up in 20 seconds though. So I am starting to set up here a little bit. I am looking at my Festermite and I'm thinking, okay, so... I can do one more cycle of Festermite potentially before my army is up, but at this point I'm just looking at getting the perfect cooldown sync where I pop absolutely everything together. So you can see that I actually choose to just let the Festermite tick off. Now I build wounds on the boss, build some runes. So I have three wounds on the boss and I have five runes charged back or four. So this is the point where I go absolutely ham and just pop off on the boss. So I'm going to use my army. The millisecond it came back up, I use my army. Then I use the rest of my cooldowns. I don't know why I opened my bag there. Um, I actually forget to second pot here, which I think that's what I was checking if I did have second pots. I don't remember, quite to be quite honest. Uh, but here, just cleaving. I drop my death and decay. Again, I'm cleaving the ad, the boss. I use my AMS defensively just to get some extra runic power. And then I'm just pumping out as much damage as I can. So again, my Army of the Dead um, didn't have its full duration. It was, it was pretty close. I think it got sh cut short just a little bit. So 8 minutes and 26 seconds. That means that I lost out on about 4 seconds of Army of the Dead. So this is kind of right on the edge where it's still worth using two armies because you will get the majority of your second one as well. But if your kills get significantly faster than this, you will actually hit a point where it is not worth using your first army because you will not get the second one. One thing that I can tell you, if for example you get like an 8 minute and 10 second kill time, then what you can do is actually pop your army about 10 seconds early in the first phase. So instead of popping it 2 seconds before the pull, just pop it at 10 seconds before the pull. And that kind of pushes your timings, timings to line up a little bit nicer in this last phase. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions about this fight, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Um, I know there's a lot of maybe specific things that I did not cover. So if you guys are curious about those and have specific questions about this fight, make sure to let me know. Again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.